this episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine was made possible by contributions from slaves like you. Thank you very much. Tonight, I will speak directly to these people and make the situation perfectly clear to them. The security of this nation depends on complete and total compliance. Tonight, any protester, any instigator, or agitator will be made example of. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine, where riot porn is served with lube and tissue. I am your host, The Stimulator, and the 20 gangsters of the industrialized world descended on Pittsburgh only to be met with the furious energy of the motherfucking resistance. The summer of rage is transitioning into the fall of capitalism. As expected, the motherfucking pigs did their master's bidding and unleashed their testosterone-laden authority while hiding their small peckers inside Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Halloween costumes. Pigs also took this opportunity to release their latest single, Lard. Or is it Elrad? <laughs> LRAD, the Long Range Acoustic Device. They were mounted on police cars during the Republican National Convention in 2004. We didn't see them in St. Paul, but we saw them here and they were used on us here. And uh, kind of creepy, gotta say, acoustic cannons. You know, they first used them, I think, in Baghdad and Afghanistan, maybe. That was Nigel Perry from Twin Cities Indie Media. We'll have more from Nigel after the break. Meanwhile, inside the fortress, the man your mama calls Obama came out to chill motherfuckers out and let them know that everything is A-OK, -okay, while not making any real commitments to fight global climate change. We brought the global economy back from the brink. We laid the groundwork today for long-term prosperity as well. He then dismissed the protesters' claim that global capitalism was the problem. I think that many of the protests are just uh, directed generically at capitalism. Uh, and they object to uh, the existing global financial system. They object to free markets. Uh, one of the great things about the United States is, is that you can speak your mind and you can uh, protest. And that's uh, part of our tradition. Uh, but I fundamentally disagree with their view that uh, the free market is the source of all ills. What Obama didn't tell his pals is that the almighty dollar is eating a ball of shit. I think we're on the verge of another major crisis that's far greater than the one the government is trying to deal with now, and that is the coming collapse in the value of the U.S. dollar. That this whole charade is being unmasked. You're going to see off with their heads. There's going to be another revolution in this country. And that soon, very soon, the slave revolt will be dancing on the ruins of industrial civilization. Wait. Did I just say that out loud? Obama's next stop is Copenhagen, where he will be pimping his hometown of Chicago to the five cock rings of death. Even though more than 80% of its citizens oppose this unlubricated Trojan horse of fascism. Chicago is ready. The American people are ready. We want these games. Hey, Barack Obama. WTF are you doing? There's um, healthcare debates, wars, unemployment and the economy and um, you're going on a trip to Copenhagen? Don't worry Anne, the motherfucking resistance is alive and well in Denmark and I'm sure they will give Mr. Clean Coal a welcome he will never forget. Just last week and over 1500 brave freedom fighters attempted to shut down the Vattenfall coal-fired power plant in Copenhagen. However, an unprecedented number of Danish pigs blocked the way and brutalized the activists, arresting 177 people in the process. Activists consider this a prelude to the COP15 climate clusterfuck in December, where our dying rulers will decide the fate of the planet by blaming the third world for their high carbon emissions while putting business and profit before our motherfucking future. 
California also saw a high activity of resistance this past weekend. In Riverside, the motherfucking resistance surrounded a neo-Nazi rally that was supposed to take place at a day laborer site. The crowd snatched and burned a couple of Nazi flags and questioned the motives of these ignorant boneheads. We're proud of our heritage. We're showing it. Same as the way everybody else is showing it. Hey, you don't look white to me, dude. German Italian, my friend. Here's a fact, I don't know whether you know or not. Um, Sicilians have uh, black blood pumping through their hearts. Eventually, the crowd chased those crazy ball heads into their Korean-made automobiles. And finally, in Santa Cruz, students occupied a building at the University of California in protest to how the governor is handling the state's economic crisis. In Honduras, there's a brave resistance that is fighting to reinstate their democratically elected president Manuel Zelaya, who at the moment is stuck inside the Brazilian embassy in Tegucigalpa. There's only one thing stopping Zelaya from taking what's rightfully his. Can you guess what that is? Is it a fence? Is it Master Yoda? Or is it the motherfucking police? That's right, the cool leaders would not be getting away with this bullshit if they didn't have the support of the pigs. The same goes for most so-called democracies. If the leaders of the wrongly named free world did not have a police apparatus, you better believe that they wouldn't do half the shit that they do. Yep, the cops are one of the biggest hurdles of the resistance, and every year the popo looks more and more like the army. Here's Nigel Perry commenting on the military presence on the G20 summit. People who were arrested were telling stories about, well, the National Guard and maybe some airborne regiment were manning the jails. And, um, you know, so you were pretty much being arrested by National Guard people who weren't calling you arrestees, they were calling you detainees. But has it always been like this? Have the cops always existed? To answer these and other constabulary questions, I bring you Christian Williams author of Our Enemies in Blue, Police and Power in America. Hey Christian, how the fuck are you? Oh, I'm fine. So, what the fuck is the police? Well, the modern police as an institution are characterized chiefly by having a general law enforcement authority in a particular geographic area, usually a municipality, so a city. Um, they're also uh, professional as opposed to volunteer, uh, paid by salary as opposed to fee, and maintain a 24-hour service with continuity of personnel. And what the fuck is their function? My argument in Our Enemies in Blue is that the main function of the police actually has very little to do with crime or enforcing the law and is more directed toward maintaining existing social inequality, especially those based on race and class. Prove it. Well, if you look at how the police develops historically, they uh, evolved from a previous institution called the slave patrols, which were specifically intended to control the black population, especially the slave population in the South. And as cities began industrializing and um, the owners of slaves began renting them out within cities for industrial efforts, it changed the mechanisms of control for slavery. And the slave patrols um, relatively quickly developed the characteristics of the modern police force. So looking at it historically, we can see how it evolved with that aim in mind. 
and with crime control. <laughs>